Beautiful. Okay, chat. So both teams' rosters are set. It was a little bit time-consuming and a pain in the ass, as it always is. Everything is set up for the beginning of the season. What I want to look at, um, I guess we can... I guess we can look at the top prospect list now. I'm not sure if it's better to do that now or after. Maybe we'll look at it twice. Uh, Robert Poisson is at the top. In terms of any names in the top 50, though, for either of our squads, it's not looking too good. Not looking too... Hey, Will Benson is there. So the Rule 5 pickup for you guys at 36. Will be in the majors this year, of course. And he is not the only one. You also have Frank Jones. So I have nobody in the top 50. You guys have two in the top 50 in Frank Jones and Will Benson. So congratulations for that. Now I do want to do something a little bit different for this season. Uh, first and foremost, I will mention uh, my rotation this year. So again, for the most part, I'm, I'm just... I'm, not caring about pitching. The only guy that I have that I care about, despite the fact I've taken a lot of pitchers, is Lee Anthony will be in the majors this season. It's a bit of a risk because he's a potential, but we're going to see if, uh, you know, if he can live up to it. You could argue another season in AAA would, would do him wonders. Uh, and also my Rule 5 pickup, Alejandro Zapata. There as well as the closer. How much time is he going to get as a closer? Maybe not much, but it is what it is. Uh, the Expos rotation. Just to look at your setup, of course, Jace Vines is there, as is your Rule 5 pickup. And Henry Tanaka. Vines now 27 at this point. Tanaka, of course, 24. And in terms of the bullpen, you have nobody. So it's just Vines and Tanaka that you're really caring about. Your lineup uh, really led only by Will Benson. There is nobody else in your lineup that you care about. You guys uh, elected to go very conservative uh, with your lineup and with your rotation. So you have a couple of players to look at, but Will Benson is the guy. Cannon of an arm. He's in the three spot. Who you guys will hope will develop this season. For the Rockies, I have a lot more of a presence with drafted players, including risking Bobby Jensen as well. For the sake of development, the 18-year-old. I also have Rule 5 pickups Kyle Tucker and Seth Beer, Tommy Kilpatrick as well, so that you know that three you know three punch combination in the heart of the order with my outfield. Very happy with that. So between Jensen and my outfielders, even though Beer is a DH, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, and of course, nobody there on the bench. So I have a little bit more of a presence with our drafted players so far. The one thing that I'm gonna do. Because I feel like it's uh, I feel like it's fair. Knucklehead, I can't wait to go fishing. We are going to handle scouting. But all we're going to handle is discovery. So the AI is pretty shit at discovery as we found out. But what I want to do is at least handle the discovery. We're not going to manually scout players. But I am going to try to give the AI for both of us the best opportunity possible to at least find every player available, and that way we have more of a player pool uh, to draft from. So bear with me here uh, with this strategy, but I, uh, I do think it'll be the right way to go for both of us. It's a little bit more work to put in, but definitely, definitely worth it to get more of a player pool available, because for those that didn't know, uh, yeah, you, you have to scout players. Like, there can outright be players in the draft that you never knew existed because your scouts didn't find them. And even then, if, you know, our scouts here don't have a good discovery rating, uh, there's a chance they still can't find them in this short amount of time. But two days is kind of the sweet spot to allow for discovery, but also to, you know, give your scouts time to then actually look at the guys afterwards. So... We'll see how that plays out. Haven't found where when you sign scouts. I'll show you right now. Uh, so the sign scouts, uh, spring training, go up here to uh, the hold handshake tab, contracts, scouts. It is a little bit hidden, to be honest. But yeah, that is indeed where you find it. So now we're going to go pitcher lefty clutch for everywhere. Whoops. 
your lefty clutch. And yeah, again, we'll hope that this helps us find a few more players rather than having it be completely random. We'll see how the draft goes. Ultimately, if you guys think, ah, eh, it's not really worth it, just go back to menu simming and we get what we get based off of our scouts. I'm cool with that. But we can at least see how a draft goes with us having this a little bit more of information. Ultimately, I'll leave it up to you guys for whatever you think is more interesting. Obviously, this will be a little bit more time consuming, but it can end up perhaps with more interesting drafts. And I mean, I feel like for the most part, I've, I've done this enough. I know how to quickly scout out everything that we need to scout out, even for two players. So, is the franchise menu too simple? Uh, you know, there's an argument to be made that simplicity is nice, and then there's an argument that, well, is it too simplistic? And I think both are, uh, both are justified, to be honest. I don't know. It's, it's clean. Is it maybe a little bit too clean? I don't know. But then someone would be like, ah, you just complain no matter what. And maybe I would. Let's see. Catcher. Let's go. Arm strength and fielding. Uh, wow, you guys have already discovered all catchers. So I'm just going to let this dude uh, scout that guy. Then catcher. Arm strength fielding. Arm strength fielding. Catcher. Arm strength fielding. Uh, same thing. You guys will get to scout out somebody good. Cool beans. We got rid of the Comic Sans font. <laughs> Me too. The fact that they actively used Comic Sans in the game before was uh, incredible. Uh, catch oh, your arm good strength. The fielding for speed you. doesn't really matter. Rage against the Vagine. Thank you for the follow. Hell of a name. Hell of a name, sir. Hell of a name. I give you credit. Alright, and then for me, shout to Void. Getting a decent little pickup. All catchers have been uh, have been found. Name of the night. Name of the night so far. I'll give you that. Alright, let's see. Almost to the first month, both of our teams are just repeatedly getting pooped on in field we'll go arm strength and uh, fielding arm strength and fielding across the board see what that does now that's a movement to get behind but up up but up up and then, whoops, infield. Let's do speed and fielding. See what else we can find here. Like I said, we're just trying to give our scouts more options because I don't trust them. If you guys think this slows it down a little bit too much, let me know and we can, uh, we can certainly bail on the idea. But like I said, we'll, uh, we'll judge it after the draft to see what you think. Can't help but think we're both, I mean, not as if we haven't been having good drafts by just leaving it up solely to the auto scouting. You know? Outfield, arm strength and fielding. And for the Rockies, arm strength and fielding. Sweet, got another two days there. Both of our teams are hot trash. Speed and fielding now across the board. And we are almost done with this little mini process. And then again, we can leave the, uh, the top scouts with whatever we want. Uh, I'll scout this guy, because that's who I'd actually scout. For you guys, I'll scout your top option. All right, so that is it. Let us go ahead and sim to draft day. And we'll see how this plays out, this particular draft, now that we were a little bit more hands-on with the scouting here heading into 
the draft. Let's see what we got. The 2023 draft. The first pick, of course, belongs to your Montreal Expos. And if you want the opportunity to select this pick, it's Expos in chat. And you will have a chance to win the number one overall selection in this draft. Expos in chat. Uh, no competitive balance pick for us. No uh, compensation pick there either. I do get a competitive balance round B pick, which is pretty nice. So I'm going to have one more pick than you guys in this draft, which is pretty sweet. Uh, so taking a look now, all right? If you've entered the raffle to get the selection, I'm going to look at the players. I don't care if you have to write it on a piece of paper, type it in a document on your phone. I don't care. I'm going to go through these players. If you get that number one pick, keep some of these guys in mind, okay? We're going to try to make this roll a little bit fast. So in terms of starting pitchers, uh, honestly, you guys got kind of shafted. In terms of the 80s, you got kind of shafted. I mean, 75s maybe, but you probably don't want to risk it yet. Cesar Nunez, I'm going to be honest with you, is uh, kind of meh. I'm going to be honest with you, he's kind of meh. And I think I'm going to move myself up here so that nothing's really uh, nothing's really cut off. You know, I'll go up here so that nothing's really cut off. So, uh, yeah, he's kind of meh. Probably not who you want for a number one pick. There's also John Sisk, who's ready next year. I mean, five options or you know, five different. He's a he's a he's a bit of a risk. I'll be honest with you as well. Good endurance, good hits per nine. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, bam, bam, cam. I will try to answer that as well. I know he's 24, but he's ready next year. So that's that's the risk with old Sisk. You also have Jack Rankin, who's 23 and is apparently way down the road. So that's also uh, that's also a bit rough. So I don't know if you guys want to go with a starting pitcher based off of what you know there. I'll be honest, you could go with the reliever, but you really don't want to go with the reliever in the first round unless they're amazing. And your top relievers that you know of, again, you could take a risk with some of these guys you have no information on. Uh, but you have Chris Casto who looks fucking phenomenal, if we're being honest. He's 20 years old and ready next year. This guy looks fantastic. But that's the type of player where, you know, grandfather's grave, I'm not taking him with the second overall pick. That's the type of dude you want to try to get in the second or third round. That's an incredible pick, for sure. Uh, you guys also have Jose Guerra. Guerra? I'm not sure. Uh, who's also pretty solid in terms of the uh, potential that he has here. So, he's, he's not too bad either, and apparently ready next year as well. Uh, for closers, you have two dynamite closers available, though, from the looks of it. Fernando Padilla, 19 years old, ready next year. So, again, another guy who... I mean, if you want to... It's kind of like taking a goalie in the first or second round. You know they're going to be good, but this isn't necessarily what you want. Uh, Giancarlo Adele VR also available. This guy looks great, too. So, I mean, you do have some great relievers to take. I would write down those names in case you don't get that first pick. Second, third round, those guys are there. Go for them. Uh, but, yeah. Catcher-wise, now you do have a 75 who's confirmed. I know Pena's there. Uh, Darnell Everett is meh. If he has a good potential, he's not that bad, but he's meh. Uh, you know. If you guys could get him in the third or fourth round, go for it. However, Richard Pena. <sighs> ready next year at 18 years old. I gotta be honest, this kid might be worthy of the number one pick. You might have yourselves a franchise catcher there. You might. You just might. Good blocking, good arm. He might be your Adley Rushman. First base wise, no guarantees. You have Chad Wiseman, who looks to be a good fielder, but again, you can't completely trust that, unfortunately. He's an interesting one. High injury risk as well, though, worth keeping an eye on. Uh, and then you also have Henry Beckham, 
who is kind of similar. He's kind of similar. And again, it's Expos in chat if you want a chance to make this number one pick. Second base, again, you have nobody guaranteed. Justin Jorgensen, Cedric Lenskow, nobody guaranteed. Third base, nobody guaranteed. Your scouts kind of uh, kind of dick you a little bit, for being honest. Shortstop, he's not guaranteed. You have Derek Ramirez, who could be phenomenal. Plays uh, every infield position. Every infield position. He'll be ready in two years at 18 years old and looks very well-rounded as a defense-first option. That's an interesting player. And then you also have Casey Hoff. 19 years old, but his four-plus years out, and the attributes are looking a little bit rough. i got to be honest, you probably shouldn't take him unless you're trying to tank the team. In the outfield, Ryan Fairhurst. He's 21 and four-plus years out. So you'd be drafting the Australian just hoping that he has the potential. But those attributes aren't there. And then from there, toss-ups, Miguel Montanez. 20 years old, maybe four years out. It's not 100% confirmed. Uh, you know, eh, if we're being honest. And Lane Noble, I gotta be honest, also meh. Decent speed, but not much anything else. And then Overmeyer would be a complete long shot. Uh, Steven Nesteroff, 22 years old, but he's four plus years out. That's also kind of a trap player for you guys. And then in right, you have two more players that say that are worth considering James Borden. You guys have a real tough choice here between James Borden and that catcher. Because this guy looks sick too. Very well rounded. Switch hitter as well. And Elvis Trevino, who has the speed, but I'd be looking at the other guy if you were to go for the outfielder. So with that, you've gotten a look at everybody that's there. The choice... The choice, the choice, and actually here, I'll go back over to this webcam. The choice, and we'll drop ourselves back down here. The choice, the choice, is up to, drumroll please, Chef Boy. Chef Boy, are you here, and were you paying attention? Who's it going to be? I'll text I am indeed a Red Sox fan. And he makes his choice with the number one overall pick. The Montreal Expos, have they locked down their franchise cornerstone center? It is Richard Pina with the selection. Number one overall, fresh out of high school. We'll see how good he is at the end of the draft. That brings up the Rockies. Now, I'm intrigued to see how my scouts did. I get to see your scouts information. You get to see mine, so it's fair. Let's see what I got here. And I found a lot more pitchers, but didn't get great information on any of them. Jesus. You sure he's a center? I meant catcher. Whatever, dog. Dude, I've been up since 6.30 this morning, scraping old wallpaper. Suck my dick for misspeaking. I don't care. You could have let it go one more time. You just could have let it go. You could have let it go. But now you get to suck my dick. Thank you. Anyway, uh, out of starting pitchers. Oh boy, who do we got? Eduardo Gonzalez. Would be a bit of a toss up for me. He would be a bit of a toss up for me. But where's the fun in letting it go? To not be annoying little shits. That's the fun. That's the fun in it. To once, for one time in four years, to not be annoying little shits. There's the fun in it. To do something different. To pretend it's opposite day. For God's sakes. Anyway, um, I'm going to look elsewhere. So for catchers, I don't think you had these guys available. Donnell Salmons. Eh, he's not that bad. It's fun to see Tuki Rage. If you think that was Rage, you're an idiot and haven't seen anything. <laughs> oh, Mr. Salmons. You're definitely not number two overall pick worthy. What about Geringer? 
not number one, uh, number two overall pick worthy. First base, Paul Shockley. Not worthy. I mean, I know you're from Massachusetts, Paul, but I can't uh, can't take you here with this pick. Justin Jorgensen, there's no way. Third base, Todd McDemy. Love it. Shortstop. Bunch of shot in the dark players. Irvin Dixon. Good old Irvin. It's too many of those mustaches, man. Six foot five, by the way. Fairhurst, man. Mm. Harold Kirkpatrick. Harold. Uh, Harold. We might have to talk, Harold. Don't necessarily need an outfielder, Harold, but we might have to talk. Lamar Raider as well. Not bad. Harold Kirkpatrick. What about Phil Luther? Phil! Phil! Alright. Left field's interesting. Nesterov's not. And then right. Now see, my scouts did nothing with James Borden, but now I know. But now I know. Elvis Trevino. It's looking like an outfielder for me. I mean, I'd love to get one of the two closers, but I don't desperately need them. I'd love to get one of them in the second round. I think that's what we're both kind of aiming for, is to get one of those two guys in the second or third round. Um, my pitching staff is much more well-rounded than yours already. And there's not a starter that I can bank on to be incredible. You know? Eric Ishii, not quite there. Johnny Ross. Johnny Ross isn't that bad. Spencer Batson is not that bad either. Juan Delgado. Okay. There's a couple of outfielders that I like, and there's a couple of pitchers that I like. It's really hoping for infielders, but I'm just not finding them. Funny thing is, I do have space for one more outfielder to run beer at DH. I'm going to go for James Borden. I'm going to do it. I like what I saw on uh, his particular scouting report. I'm going for one James Borden. Uh, very, very happily going. Loka, thank you for converting the prime sub. James Borden, come on down. And we'll see who's off the board. And a lot of the guys we were talking about are off the board. Holy shit. Trevino, Fairhurst, both closers, Padilla and Del Villar, are off the board. She's just nuts. Raider, Shockley. It's going to be a very, very interesting second round. A very interesting second round. And this pick, uh, again, uh, we'll go ahead and go through to see kind of who is left for you guys at this stage. Um, again, catchers, you don't really need one. Velasquez would be a shot in the dark. And again, Darnell Everett was really, he, he's okay, but he's nothing special. You did just get your franchise catcher. So, you know, Velasquez would be a shot in the dark. First base, Henry Beckham could be okay. I mean, but he's 20 years old and at least four years out as a switch hitter. Kind of a toss up there. You could... Try to rely on some of the 75s, but they're all apparently four years out. They might not actually be. But David O'Dell is just kind of meh in terms of the attributes. Fielding first. Barrera, also meh. Stratton, very meh. So I don't really know if you guys have anything at first base. Second base, Cedric Lenskow would be a complete shot in the dark. You can't trust those attributes. He does have a phenomenal name. Uh, there's also Will Shin. Will Shin at second base, 20 years old, apparently ready next year, plays every position under the sun. Second, third, short, and all the outfield spots. 
And if that accuracy chart is to be believed, Will Shin could be a hell of a pick for you guys here. Third base, nothing. Shortstop, again, you could go shot in the dark with uh, the likes of Derek Ramirez, who does look like a really good fielding first shortstop at 18 years old. Aside from that, again, complete shot in the dark. And the outfield, Miguel Montanez. Looks like he has decent power, but not much else at 20 years old. He's at least four years out, apparently. Uh, Overmeyer, complete dartboard pick. Lane Noble as well. Uh, good contact, decent speed, so we'll see what was there. Uh, center field again, William Yang, complete shot in the dark. Buxton's 22 and four years out, apparently. Attributes are kind of mad for the Canadian. And then right, a couple of 80s where it's just best guess. And then for the pitchers, uh, for the starters, I mean, you got Nunez, who's apparently four years out at 21. Jack Rankin, Sisk is still there. He's a big risk pick. And then you got some of these other guys, like Spencer Batson, you know nothing about him. But if that accuracy, while it's inaccurate, is to be believed, you're good to go. Uh, for the relievers, Jose Guerra is still there. If you're going for a reliever, we talked about it. I think that's your guy. I really do think that's your guy. He was uh, he was one of the good ones, and then you have a bunch of 80s. You also have Casto, who's not too bad either. So, I mean, Casto or Guerra, you could go either way. And then for closers, eh... Jim Rodriguez is a step down. So with that, you know who's available. The pick belongs to Heffrey. Heffrey, congratulations. What's it going to be with the first pick of the second round? The pick belongs to Heffrey. Hopefully he was paying attention. Hopefully, hopefully. Who's it going to be? You have seen all of the options. I see shortstop one more time. Yes, you can, sir. Chat seems divided between Shin and a reliever. Again, we're still in the early stages. You just need to get the best player available. It's just a matter of who you think it is. He wants a look at uh, Derek Ramirez again. Who, you know, not bad. For a defense first option. Plays short, first, second, and third. Who will it be? Can you trust it? An incomplete accuracy, about 50%. Can you trust it? Can you trust it? He goes for Derek Ramirez, the 18-year-old shortstop. That is the pick. Off the board, perhaps. But the pick is made. Derek Ramirez to Montreal. And with the Rockies, this is my first of back-to-back -back picks, which I'm very happy about. Very happy about indeed. God, for a catcher, I might just have to go with Gehringer. It's crazy. Or, like, take a risk pick with Sexton. Or Sexton. He's not Richie Sexton. I, I don't like... I don't like Gehringer at all. First base, Odell. I don't like these guys either. Second base, Sergio Lopez. Do got my boy Will Shin there, though. <laughs> Do got my boy Will Shin there. Interesting, interesting. Certainly somebody I could be looking at. Maybe just maybe. Is Mr. Will Shin. Sask, what's going on, buddy? How are you? Hope you're doing well. I mean, if my report's to be believed, I have no information on Shin whatsoever, though. So. 
That's your issue. I don't have a complete report on him. <sighs> Man, Shin, Kirkpatrick. They already took Borden. If I'm not mistaken, there are still uh, some starters I'm interested in. There are some relievers that I'm interested in. And there's an outfielder that I'm interested in. Or an infielder. I don't need a starter. But I am very much going to rob people off of uh, what I know from you guys. Very, very much so. And based off of what I need... Ah, uh, Barisas, what's going on? As much as I want Jose Guerra, I'm going to hope he's available in the next round. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to take Will Shin. Because this man can play everywhere. Will Shin is my pick. The question is, will my reliever still be on the board? And the answer is yes. We double it up with Will Shin and Jose Guerra. A, a double up for the wonderful Colorado Rockies. Jose Guerra and Will Shin, welcome aboard. You'll love to see it. There's Gehringer's off the board. Got some really good players for the Orioles season, too. Almost had 80 million in calf. God damn. God damn. I'm very happy with how that went for me. That brings us to round number three. At this stage, again, we'll do another... Uh, God, you know what? We won't even do a, a quick walkthrough, will we? It's a tough call. That's yeah, a tough call. We'll just draft the name. And it's Popcorn Chicken. To Popcorn Chicken. Let's see what you can do. I believe in you. And good old Montreal. Again, a reminder to you all that... Oh boy, that is not exactly what I wanted. I mean, it is, but still. A reminder that that right there is your, uh, your full list of players. From your starters to your one reliever, your closer. That is your, uh, your list of players right now that you have so keep that in mind as you uh decide where we should look keep that in mind and we'll see where we go can i sort by age i very much can i very much can those are your 18 year olds that are remaining Again, you can look at whatever you want at this stage. It's completely up to one popcorn chicken. Who will it be? Also, shout out to Ryan Mitchell Tree. <laughs> what a name, Mitchell Tree. Sort by accuracy. You got it. Those are your top dudes by accuracy. West Coast, indeed, we are about ready to wind down the stream here after this. But for now, we're here. Before uh, dropping another sponsored 50 bomb to end the night. Going to go a little bit later than I can afford to, but eh, what are you going to do? He's going for Scotty Vea. The starter. Are the servers still down? Well, shit, we might have to wait. He goes for the starting pitcher. One Scotty Vela. We're going with Vea because that's what it is. So, Scotty, welcome. Indeed, A squared I am because I'm a busy boy. Scotty joins up. Let's see who the Rockies can get here. Let's see who the Rockies can get here. Who was the sponsor? It was Deeds. Dropping the old 25er. All right, so who is still available? that I was interested in. 
Who still available? That is a name that I was interested in. Man, Dixon's still there. He's a risky pick. My boy Harold. Guys, I I might be completely wrong. But holy hell. Is it possible that your boy has knocked it out of the park with this draft? It is possible that for the second year in a row, I have knocked it out of the park. We are taking Harold Kirkpatrick with this pick, another outfielder. But I will gladly take what I can get here. Texie, congrats on being a Mr. CHL Game 7. Good old Kirkpatrick. We move on to round number four. And the pick belongs to AJ. AJ, congratulations. You're up. We have mentioned numerous times, time and time again, players to keep an eye out for and such. Who will it be? Who will it be? What will we do? You are in control here of this stage of the draft. Make it snappy. Again, so far you guys have ended up with catcher Richard Pena, Derek Ramirez, and Scotty Vea. Potential first, then accuracy. All right, in terms of potential, you got quite a few 80s left. Quite a few 80s left, quite a few yellow bars. And in terms of the accuracy, you have no green bars, just yellow bars. But it was quite a few 80s left. What a song, by the way. 80s. Well, I mean, you know, if it's to be believed. Piney, what's going on, buddy? Check Henry. I'm guessing you mean one Henry Beckham. Who, I mean, looks well-rounded. Switch hitting first baseman. He's going to take a few years to be ready. But if he has a good potential, he might not be that bad. Who's to say? We're here in the fourth round. Oh, the boys are struggling. The boys are struggling. Because they know. They know they're in trouble. They know. Marcus Thomas's stats. Not mistaken, that was somebody who was here. Starting pitcher is 21. Apparently ready next year. Marcus Thomas. Looking like a solid option, honestly. Maybe. Tough call. Potential-wise on him, it was showing up as a 75. Is it accurate or not? We don't know. We only know 50% of the story. He's going for Marcus Thomas. The pick is made. Montreal adds a, another starting pitcher into the organization Marcus Thomas is picked and for me for me for me for me for me for me who for me for me for me for me hmm mm hmm Do I go into best guest category and hope to strike gold? Oh, 
or do I not? Don't really have too much faith in Spencer Batson, but that might be exactly the reason to take him. And then, of course, there is the interesting man known as John Sisk, who, I mean, I have him scouted a little bit less than you do, but boy, do my scouts not agree. My scouts not agree. I have taken so many starters at this stage. While I do need to win this draft, I also desperately need position players now's the time I think for me to take a risk and just swing for the fences here really hope for the best just why I'm gonna risk it on a complete rando to get a catcher into the system Dwayne Burns the 18 year old from Pennsylvania I am going to just completely risk it because there's nobody else that I think is a slam dunk right now. We're going to take Dwayne Burns and hope for the best. There were some other players I didn't hate, but that was the time to risk it. Montreal is up. Your penultimate pick of the draft, and it belongs. Not to Broken Wheelchair, who won again. Congratulations. Belongs to Time to Sally. Catcher, it's worth the risk for me. I've already had a fucking dynamite draft, so. Time to Sally. Good luck. Honestly, our scouts have John Sisk scouted about the same, and they drastically differ. They drastically differ. So, uh, Piney is to be able to make the pick. It's to be able to make the pick. Let's look at starting pitchers, he says. I wasn't paying attention anyway. Fair enough. Those are your remaining starting pitchers. I mean, I am the person that has uh, more major league talent in the, uh, you know, in the show right now than you guys do. So I don't know if you want to talk trash. I did leave you guys Spencer Batson. I just don't think he's going to be that great. Again, Batson, you can't trust any of the information here because it's completely unscouted. And uh, for old Henry here. Henry, by the way? What the hell are we talking? Henry. What Henry, dog? Unless I'm losing my mind, I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't see a Henry here. I see a Kiki. Henry first base. Then what the? F the mention the first base. He's still there. He's still there. <sighs> Who will it be? Who will it be? That is the question. Who will it be? Do 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 DMCA. You got one John Sisk, the twenty four year old. Five, four, three, two. Well, we're winning this pick. All right, well, let's remember that. Fifth round. Penultimate pick. And he also wanted to look at old Napoleon Silk. Who, again, is completely unscouted. But he is a six foot five, 19 year old. So you got that going for you. Switch hitter, too. As a pitcher, love to see it. You also have a DH, so it doesn't matter. 6'5", 230. He's a big boy. 
He's a big boy. What can you say? Batsum is good for two. Batsum was okay. He wanted Sisk, not Silk. He said Napoleon and Sisk. Sisk, Napoleon, Silk. So, catcher, he, he got both. Shh. Do, 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 boom, boom. Who's it gonna be? Chat's going for Batson. It's fair enough. I, I could have played the I don't need him, I'll take him card. And it might come back to haunt me, but like I said, I needed position players desperately at this stage. So, he's going with Napoleon Silk. He goes against the chat after asking chat what's up. You guys take your third starter of the drafts. Going with starter Napoleon Silk. Which means I will gladly now take Spencer Batson. Thank you for somehow letting him fall to me. Spencer Batson, come on down to the Colorado Rockies. Thank you very much. On to the sixth round. On to the sixth round. And the final pick of this draft for the Expos belongs to Ivory. Ivory, congratulations. And if I, yep, Ivory's here. Perfect, cool. So I can close the thing. Ivory, congratulations. You are up. Will a winner be you? The final pick here for the Expos. That is the question. The choice is yours, how this plays out. Again, keep in mind, uh, this is who you've drafted so far. This is who you've drafted so far. Sisk is still there. I mean, imagine what that means if the AI is not taking Sisk. Uh, can you sort by accuracy? It's accuracy, you got nothing overall. Uh, that's what you got, but again, there's no accuracy. So... It's uh, it's looking a little bit rough there, Ivory. It is the you know it is the sixth round after all. It really is. Just throw a dart at the board and see what you get. This isn't very helpful. No, it's not. Seventh round. Seventh round. What will it be, Ivory? I can look at whatever. Very limited board at this stage. She's going for John Sisk. You take your fourth starter of this draft. John Sisk finally goes in the sixth round. And for the Rockies, I have no fucking idea. I actually got a couple of players. Zeke Drew. Uh, he's okay. Good break, good velocity. His velocity is already developed. It's not going to get any better. Cameron Walker, no. Lionel Smith. Mm. Cedric. Mm -mm. Montana, if there was power to develop. Not digging it. Well. Well, well, well. I think, again, I'm looking at just best guess. Well, let's go. So I did. Because it's fun. Streamer, as you should. Actually, let's go back into the old Phantom Bot dashboard really quickly. I forgot to shut down the raft, which is now officially closed. Oh man, ah, uh, this is this is shit. I already took a random guess on a catcher. Well, 
I'm in a real rough spot here. We got old Mikey, who can play second in the outfield. Ricky Labine, who can play second, third, and short. Which is pretty nice. Cedric, who again I just don't trust. Carmine Melendez, no secondary positions really. I think I'm leaning towards Mikey Zuniga. Hank Mansfield. Great beard, can play left. I don't have an outright first baseman. Let's uh, let's go for it. I'm gonna go with the uh, the random pick. We're gonna go for hammering Hank Mansfield. So I had two shot in the dark picks in this draft, and that'll do it. So the question is, who won the draft between Tug and Twitch Chat? Who will get the advantage in the off season when it comes up to uh, getting preferential treatment? Let us find out. We will go to the Expos first, who have won five games on the season compared to Colorado's 12. Here we go. Your number one overall pick was Richard Pena. Holy shit. You had the number one pick, and you hit a goddamn home run. 18 years old, 74 overall, with the A potential. Congratulations. He was compared to Joe Maurer, and yeah, he is going to be one of the best catchers of his generation. Richard Pena, slam dunk of a pick, number one overall. The question is, how did the rest of the draft go? First of all, again, Richard Pena is here. No secondary position for the 18-year-old. Your second pick was Derek Ramirez who is 18, uh, 18 years old, 65B potential at shortstop. To be honest, a very good pick, too. He's got decent enough speed. I think you guys did pretty well there, too. I mean, two for two so far in terms of decent picks. Third overall for you, you took starting pitcher Scotty Vea, who, 19 years old, 72 overall, B potential. You guys are three for three so far. Those are three very good players. Again, Pina is a slam dunk and a half. Ramirez is great. Scotty Vea should be great. Fourth, you took Marcus Thomas, who is okay. He's not amazing. Could be your fifth guy, maybe even your long reliever. 21 years old, a 69 overall. C potential, he's not bad. Napoleon Silk, 19 years old, 71 overall, B potential. You guys are getting some damn high overalls here. That's another great pick. And your final pick was John Sisk, who is a 65 at 24 years old. B potential. There you have your draft class, guys. And uh, dare I say you knocked it out of the park. That is a very, very strong draft class. Very, very strong indeed. The question is, how did the Rockies do? This is going to be tough. This is going to be tough, potentially. Or I blew it, one or the other. Let us find out. For the Rockies, my pick, second overall. James Borden, 72 at 18 years old. A potential. Turns out we both knocked it out of the park. Well, our guy was better. Well, you also picked first. So I'm going to call that pretty goddamn even. James Borden, welcome to the team. 18 years old, no secondary position in right, switch hitter. Very happy with that. Second, you used our scouting and you used mine too, so hush. Will Shin, however, was a miss. 20C66 overall, he's okay. But you guys clearly took the second round. That first round, I'm sorry, that's a tie. You clearly took the second, you clearly took that second round. Third round, Jose Guerra, 21B, but a 57. Oh, I think you guys won this round. The next round, Kirkpatrick, 20C and a 67. I think you guys got me on this one. 
And you got me. 20, 67, and a C. I'm getting decent players, but not nearly as good. Uh, my random shot in the dark catcher, 18, C, and a 48. So that strategy didn't work. You guys did gift me Spencer Batson, though, so uh, eat a dick. 21, 65, and an A, so very happy to end up with Spencer Batson. And my final pick, shot in the dark, Hank Mansfield, didn't work, so... I ended up with a decent draft. You guys had a fantastic draft, all things considered. Unfortunately, uh, again, my risk pick of Burns and Mansfield didn't really work. I could have gone for more guarantees, but I really needed to risk it for position players. And uh, it didn't work. So, good shit. You guys got me on this round. Your first pick was better. Of course your first pick was better. He was first overall. You can't sit there and be like, well, he was better. Of course he was better. You were, you were the only one that had a chance at him. You didn't win that draft off of Richard Pena. You won it off of the rest of the picks. You can't sit there and be like, well, we won because of Richard Pena. I never had a shot at drafting him. That's how the first overall pick works. That's like the Oilers being like, yeah, fuck you, Buffalo. We got McDavid. Buffalo never had a shot at McDavid. You see how that works? But you guys did win. You guys did win this draft. Good on you. Let's be honest, you needed it because your other drafts have been pretty shit. You needed it. Some good additions, though. Some good additions. I'm still pretty happy with my draft, but not to the uh, not to the same level. Very happy with James Board. Could have lost more games. Well, maybe if I wasn't so good at drafting every other year. I thought the objective was to uh, win games, you know? And with one Spencer Batson, Jose Guerra, uh, James Borden, Harold Kirkpatrick. I'm certainly going to be doing that. I'm leaving you guys behind with your five wins while I have 12. We'll still end up with the number one and two picks. The Expos win this round of the draft. Again, we do have to decide how we want to, um, you know, how we want to handle things in terms of the scouting. Do we want to do it like we did this year or just leave it up to the auto? We'll figure that out. But uh, it is interesting how these two teams are kind of panning out at this stage. Because, I mean, you guys caught up a little bit in terms of starting pitchers. But you only have two natural relievers. And uh, that outfield might need a bit of work as well. Whereas my outfield is set. My starters are set. Uh, my bullpen is set. So, I mean, I'm ahead in terms of the pitchers in the outfield. You're ahead in terms of the rest of the position players. It's going to be a matter of who gets the rest of those picks from there, I think. But we both ended up with phenomenal picks in the first and second round. You guys get an elite catcher. I get another addition uh, to the outfield, which, again, I am, uh, I am very, very happy with. Especially when you look at depth chart. Depth chart. Which, again, I mean, you can see why I went for a catcher. Because I have nobody. You can see why I went... For a first baseman, because I have nobody. But like I said, I mean, you know, second base at this stage. And uh, here, I'll actually just go over here. Second base at this stage, like, I'm set. I have Bobby Jensen. And I'm golden. My starting pitching, like, I'm, I'm doing pretty well. But my outfield's already set. I mean, Kilpatrick, Beer, Tucker... And then to uh, add the number two overall pick in uh, James Borden. I'm pretty well set up. I just have to get those infield players. You know, when you look at like 2024 and continuing, like Lee Anthony's projected to be an 81 by 2025. Like 2025, you can see like my starting rotation's almost there. Right? 2025... Jensen, Tucker, Kilpatrick, Beer, like these are all major league caliber guys. My bullpen with Cepeda, uh, McWilliams, Donaldson. Like in just two years, my my pitching is fine. My outfield's fine. I just need a few position players. And you know, by 2027, or here we we'll go, 2026, because that's when Tucker's deal is up. Like I'm set up pretty well. I just need those position players. For you guys. If we look at 2025, uh, to be honest, you know, the outfield's not that bad with Benson, uh, Misner, and Tahara. But the infield, I mean, it's good on the corners with uh, Jones and Chen. You need a shortstop. You need a second baseman. K 
catcher wise, you'll probably be good because obviously you just got who you drafted. So, but I'm ahead in terms of the pitching. So, like I said, it's very clear who has what and who needs what moving forward. It's just a matter of whether or not we get it in these upcoming drafts. But it's it's close. It's close. I still think I got you by a nose right now in terms of MLB uh, ready pitching. We got a shortstop this draft. You did, but when will he develop? You know. Uh, what was Shin? He was like a 60. <laughs> it wasn't that good. It wasn't that good. I mean, you did get Ramirez. That's fair. We'll see how it pans out. We'll see how it pans out. We shall see.